What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 BMW X3. Today on the X3 behind me, we're going to be doing the dreaded water pump and thermostat replacement. This DIY is going to be applicable to basically all your N52 equipped vehicles, including but not limited to your 1 Series, your 3 Series, your 5 Series, your X3s and your X5s, both rear-wheel drive and X-Drive. The unit behind me is an X-Drive vehicle, so arguably the more complicated one out of the two jobs. So that way you'll get a better view of uh, where everything is with the lack of view. Before we get too carried away, let's talk a little bit more about this water pump thermostat kit. We're using our OE kit that we list on the site. The kit includes a jug of concentrated BMW coolant, your Borg Warner thermostat, your three water pump screws. These have to be replaced every time you take the pump off and a new Pierberg pump. We recommend that you do this every 60 to 100,000 miles. That's the typical range that these tend to fail in. Shockingly enough, the X3 behind me has 172,000 miles on it with its original water pump. So, you know, it must've been made on a Tuesday versus a Friday. I really couldn't tell you what the difference is, but some of them last a very long time. Some of them last uh, 60,000 miles. Some of them last 100K. The failure is, it's all over, there's no real range. Another thing to mention is a couple things to look for when you're having a water pump go out on you or a thermostat, either are. Thermostats, typically, you're gonna get a code for these just because they're electric. So that's the nice thing about these electronic units, even though they sound painful sometimes, they do communicate with the ECU. They can tell you if they're stuck open, if they're stuck closed, other than just giving you a weird range on your temperature gauge on the dashboard. Obviously, if it's stuck open, your temp's never gonna get to operating temperature, you're gonna have no heat depending on where you live. Um, obviously, if it gets stuck closed, you're gonna have the opposite, you're gonna overheat, all bad stuff. Same thing goes with the water pump. If this stops working, you're gonna overheat. Other things that can happen, which has actually happened to the X3 behind us, is because this is part of the CAN bus system, you can get a bunch of funky codes. For example, this one has a code that is showing that it cannot communicate with the water pump. In addition to that, it is throwing the vehicle into limp mode. You can't get it over 2000 RPM without it feeling like it's gonna shutter off and turn off on you. Again, these are all related to the fact that this pump is failing and it's kind of throwing a bunch of weird signals in the CAN bus system. So just keep that in mind. It's really, it sounds out there, but it all works together. It all works in harmony. So when one thing starts going, everything starts going. Now we know what we're working with. Let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this DIY. For this job, we're gonna need a couple basic tools and we're gonna talk about a couple nice to haves as well. Starting with a quarter inch ratchet and a 3 8 ratchet. We have a couple different set of extensions here. We have a 12 inch and a two inch, as well as an inch and a half for our quarter inch ratchet. We have an eight millimeter socket. We have a swivel socket with a shallow 10 millimeter socket on it. We have an E12 torque socket, a T30 and a T25. We have a small six millimeter socket that's gonna go on our quarter inch for some of the hose clamps that are hard to reach. We have a 16 millimeter impact socket that'll come in handy for our reinforcement plate. Uh, some pliers, I have two different kinds here just for removing small rivets and or cutting zip ties if I need to. We have a pick tool. This will come in handy when we remove some of our coolant hoses with the quick connect clamps. A flathead screwdriver, both for removing the petcock as well as using as a pry tool. Uh, not necessary, but comes in really handy is a CTA flexible screwdriver with a six millimeter hex head on it. Flashlight is always good to have. A torque wrench for when we torque down our water pump hardware. And then some other nice to haves, but not super necessary, are electric impact tools. We have an impact gun and an electric ratchet. Not pictured here, but needed is a catch pan for your coolant, of course. And if you're gonna use a vacuum system to bleed the car or bleed the coolant, you're gonna to wanna to get an UView Airlift View 2. That's one of the vacuum tools that we sell here in house. And as always, floor jack, jack stands, be safe. We're gonna be working on a lift today. Let's get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are gonna start in the engine bay of the X3. Our main goal before we do anything else really is to take the expansion tank cap off so that when we drain the coolant, everything kind of flows out nicely. But while I have you up here, we're gonna go ahead and do some preventative removal of some plastic shrouds. We're gonna start by removing this ducting up top here that feeds into our air box. You're gonna need a T30. I'm gonna use a T30 on an impact gun and just zap them off really quick. And from there you have two more T30s right up top here for this part. And you have two more right by the latch. 
From here, we have a really good view of our expansion tank cap. We're gonna go ahead and pull that off now. You obviously wanna do this with a cold engine. This car has been sitting in the shop overnight. It is stone cold. Now at this point, while I have you up here, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fan shroud. We're doing this so we can see what's going on. It's not really documented that you need to take it out. However, I like to assume that the more room you have to work with, the better this whole job will go. So first we're gonna start by disconnecting our fan plug over here. Two tabs on either side, you just squeeze and pull up. Tuck that to the side, forget about it. We have another electrical connector here. Same deal. This one's gonna come up with the whole body. And then you have one small clip here that holds us into place against the fan shroud. It's kind of like one of those alligator, alligator clips. Pull that up, set it to the side. And you have one T25 on the passenger side. You're gonna to wanna to remove. I'm using a T25 on a quarter inch ratchet. Once we remove that T25, you have one plastic rivet on the driver's side by the tank that holds it into place. This is using some pliers here to kind of course this off. It's a little crusty. Now with both of those pieces of hardware off, we can go ahead and pull up the shroud. With that taken care of for the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get underneath the X3 and work on removing our splash shield and draining out some coolant. We're under the X3, we're gonna remove this forward shield. We have 11 eight millimeter bolts to remove and two plastic rivets, one of which ours is missing. So let's get to it. With that, we should be able to pull the shield down. And back to us. And now we have an exposed view of our subframe, the bottom of our radiator, where we're gonna drain from. And we can take a better look at where the water pump and thermostat sits. So. Before we get into that side of things, let's drain this radiator out. On the front driver's side, you have the end of the radiator. Here's your petcock, your drain plug. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to remove that. And I have a catch can positioned underneath to catch the coolant. This will get most of what's out in the radiator and some of the hoses. It's not gonna empty out the whole system. We'll have a ton left by the pump still when we get to that point. Make sure you hang onto your petcock or your plug and make sure it still has its little o-ring on there that's going to help seal. We're going to give that a few minutes to drain and then we'll come back and uh, take a better look at what it's going to take to remove that water pump and thermostat. Before we get into it, I went ahead and I spent a few minutes cleaning up the subframe and the surrounding area. There was a ton of oil buildup uh, just from years of neglect with a leaky oil filter housing. If you have an N52, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once that was done, now we can go ahead and show you where our electrical connectors are, where the hardware that holds the water pump and thermostat together are and just kind of where we're gonna be working. It's a very tight space. So let's get into that. Starting from the left-hand side, we have the electrical connector for the thermostat. You have two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the thermostat to the water pump. Moving to the right, we have two Torx bolts. One's buried under here and the second one's right here that hold the water pump to the block. You have your electrical connector for the water pump here. This one's a little bit tricky because the clip that holds it in is on the inboard side. So what you might see me doing uh, once we get to that point is removing the hardware for the water pump, freeing it up, and then disconnecting it. Moving up, we have the third Torx bolt that holds the water pump to the block. And then as you can see, we have a spaghetti of hoses that go to our thermostat on this side. To get the shield off, we have four 16 millimeter bolts to remove. I have a 16 millimeter impact socket on my gun. We're just gonna go ahead and zap them off really quick. With the shield off, we have a much better view, which we'll show you in a moment. You'll be able to see we have a couple of hoses going to our thermostat and one of the thermostat used over to the water pump, which you can see from the back. Here's that same line. And as you can see on the back of the water pump and thermostat, there is a U-shaped hose that connects them together that'll have to come off as well. All right, I'm gonna try to get in here with a pick tool and we're gonna go ahead and release the clip that holds this hose up top. I have my catch pan situated underneath as well so I can catch the coolant as it starts draining. Yes, there you are. And now with that done, I'm gonna try to use this long flathead screwdriver to kind of act as a 
pry tool off the thermostat body. I'm not worried about damaging the thermostat as we're replacing it. While I have you here, we're going to work on disconnecting our lower radiator hose from the thermostat as well. The clip is up top, so we're going to work a little blind, but the idea is exactly the same as the hose we just removed. You just pull the clip up and then you pull the hose off. With that unlocked, we're going to try to replicate the same thing and pry that off. Again, if you're going to be prying like I am, just be careful to not damage the hose unless you plan on replacing the hose. With those two undone, we're gonna head over to the back and work on removing some more of our hosing back there. The idea is that you remove as many of them as possible before undoing them from the block. That way you can pry and pull on the hosing and you don't have a thermostat or water pump dancing around with you. We're gonna go ahead and work on removing that U-shaped hose that connects the thermostat and the water pump together. It's very tight in there. I don't need to say that again, you already know but uh, you can use a small flathead screwdriver, a small ratchet with a six millimeter hex. I have the CTA flexible screwdriver that has a six millimeter socket bit at the end of it. I'm gonna try to use that as much as possible to undo these clamps so then we can pull some of these hoses off. So I'm gonna start on the outside one. I'm gonna kind of work between the tie rod and the control arm here. Thermostat end is off, let's rip up the water pump half. And this is what that U-hose looks like. This is something we do recommend replacing. Uh, now that I look at this a little bit better and considering the way I pulled it out, I don't know when the last time it was replaced. I know the thermostat was done on this once. Regardless, we'll pull one off the shelf, put in a fresh one when we wrap everything up. Now that we have that U-shaped hose out of the way, our next move is to disconnect the two lines running to the water pump and the thermostat. I'm gonna keep using the same six millimeter CTA flexible screwdriver to get to those two clamps. All right, we're back up front. We still have that one hose on the water pump, it's just uh, coming off of an aluminum tube that comes right off the block. There is no give in it. So what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna move on to the thermostat, get that out of the way, and then we're gonna proceed to see uh, what it'll take to maybe wiggle the pump out and leave that one line in place. So we have two 10 millimeter bolts and an electrical connector keeping this thermostat in place. I'm gonna use my 90 degree pick tool to work on removing this electrical connector right here. The electrical connector out of the way and just push everything to the side. We have a better view of our two 10 millimeter bolts we have to remove. I'm using a short 10 millimeter socket on a swivel extension, then on a longer extension on a 3 8 ratchet. That should be enough to get these out. It's easier to pull this thermostat and water pump out from above. So give me two seconds, I'll climb up top and just pull it out and then we'll proceed to working on the water pump. All right, back up top, just gonna pull out the thermostat. Remember earlier we pulled out that fan shroud, it makes life easier so that we have all the room in the world to pull this out. Eventually, once we unbolt the water pump, that's gonna come out from the same way as well, so. All right, we have three E12 Torx in total holding the water pump to the block. We're gonna work on loosening up the pump, then we'll work on our electrical connector, and then we'll work on getting it off that last hose. So, I have a combination of a 12 inch extension with a swivel adapter and an E12 torque socket. I'm gonna come from in front of the subframe, right around our camera here, and try to feed it up into the further back bolt. 
Then you'll see we have to remove the bushing that has deteriorated around the forward bolt. We'll rip that out. We have the last bolt for the water pump that is located between the water pump itself and the AC compressor. It's sandwiched right in the middle. I'm actually gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna grab an electric ratchet with a small two inch extension and my E12 socket. And I should be able to feed it on there and just give it a quick zap with the ratchet. Again, the torque value on that is very minimal. So let's give that a shot. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and wedge the pump forward a little bit so we can get to that electrical connector. All right, we have our plug more accessible to us. Right here, you can see the tab for the electrical connector. The idea is to press on that and remove the plug. I'm gonna to try to do that with this flathead so I don't get my too many fingers in the way and pull back on this. As I was prying the pump to get the electrical connector off, it kind of freed itself from that hose. We're gonna go ahead and pull the pump out. I'll probably pull it out from the top just like I did the thermostat. However, you can wiggle these power steering hoses out of the way and pull it out of there too if you'd like. Let's get this pump out and take a better look at what, uh, what we got going on in here. We're back up top. We're gonna go ahead and pull up our water pump. Again, we removed that fan shroud, electric fan earlier, so we have all the room in the world here to do these things. Otherwise, you could pull it out from the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and just place our pump back down where it's gonna go. We'll get underneath the car again and situate everything, but Pierberg side facing the front, along with your electrical connector, hose outlet towards the back. We are back under the X3. Our goal right now is to feed the pump roughly into where it's gonna sit and feed the outlet end of it back into that metal pipe or the metal pipe coupled with the rubber end that goes straight to our block. So you're gonna see me kind of wrestling it into place. As long as I know we'll be able to get it seated, then we'll work on reinstalling our hardware and our electrical connector. So without further ado, let's get into it. The trick was to angle it. This is the front of the pump, this is the back. I angled it like this. That way it had all the room in the world to tilt it into place right into the hose. We have plenty of room there to tighten up the hose clamp, but for now, while I still have a little bit of play on everything, I'm gonna work on reinstalling our hardware. And again, we use new hardware. These are torque T-yield bolts. I'm gonna start by feeding in the top E12. Once I get that lined up, it should be a little bit easier to line up the bottom ones as well. Let's start with the two bottom ones now. See if I can get them in by hand first. If not, I'll uh, go in with my extension. All right, well, I have it seated. I'm gonna show if I have, again, a 12-inch extension, swivel, and an E12 socket on here. Now comes the fun part. This is where we work on torquing them down to 10 newton meters, then we have to give them an additional 90 degrees. Yes, I know I have a very long extension here. We're gonna lose a little bit of torque, but honestly, I would rather under tighten these and over tighten them. They are aluminum bolts, and this is not a belt driven pump, so it's not gonna be under any sort of tension or stress from the drivetrain. And we have to do 90 degrees. We got 76. Let's get another, another 14 here. Bam, baby. So the same thing to the other one. If you're not using a fancy torque wrench like the one that Gareth lent us today, the best thing to do is just mark the bolt with a paint pen or a Sharpie and try to keep track of your 90 degrees on there. 90. Beautiful. We're gonna do the same thing with the last bolt up top. I cannot get that torque wrench in there. I'm gonna do the next best thing. Snug it up by hand, be very gentle with it. 10 Newton meters isn't a lot. Torqued. Now we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our electrical connector. And this one we can plug in while everything's mounted since the body of the pump not moving around is actually gonna be helpful for us. We should be 
listening for a satisfying click as we put this on. There it is. Let's give it a little tug, make sure it's not gonna come out on us. Now let's head to the back of the water pump and tighten down our hose clamp since that is situated and it's not gonna be moving anymore. And again, I'm using the CTA flexible screwdriver with a six millimeter socket bit on the end of it. Uh, at this point, because you're manipulating everything to your own uh, ways as you're putting it back together, you could use a flathead screwdriver and place that clamp wherever you want. I like this tool a lot. I'm gonna keep working with it. That looks good from here. We'll go ahead and work on getting our thermostat in now so we can join the two together and hook up the rest of our hoses. Just remember the rip side is gonna be facing the back of the engine and then your quick connect is gonna be facing the front. You have your two bolt holes and your electrical connector which are gonna be facing towards the middle of our subframe here. Now we're gonna go ahead, now that we have the thermostat situated in place, we're gonna take our two 10 millimeter bolts and feed them into place I'm using the extension the foot extension I have and the swivel adapter on the 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to use one hand to kind of line up the thermostat inside the engine bay. I'm just going to use the electric ratchet to snug them up and then we're going to torque them down to 10 newton meters. Again, these are threading into a plastic body. It's not a lot of torque. You could even argue that just hand tight is fine, but uh, you know, we have the torque wrench out. Let's just torque them down. And there's 10, baby. And while I have you up here, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our electrical connector as well. Boom, baby. Beautiful. Now that we have that buttoned up, let's go ahead and head back to the back of the water pump and thermostat. And just work in the reverse order of how we remove things and work on installing that funky U-hose and the other hoses back there. Starting with our hose on the top right-hand corner that you're looking at right now. That one feeds over from the front of the block. Let's put that hose on and then we'll work on our funky U-hose. Let's get this hose clamp situated. About there is pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our funny looking U-shaped hose that connects our thermostat and our water pump together. With that there, we're gonna go ahead and get our clamp situated. You wanna make sure that the clamp is situated in the right spot where you're gonna be grabbing onto the barbed section of the neck of the thermostat. Same thing goes with the water pump side. You don't want it too far out, but you don't want it too far in either. That is all buttoned up. Now we're gonna head back to the front of the motor, reconnect our hoses up front, and get one step closer to finishing this DIY. Up front, all we have left to do is to connect our lower radiator hose to our thermostat. And then we have this one other hose that comes in from the driver's side of the motor back over the top. So, same thing, reverse order of operations. Let's get our lower thermostat hose on here. I put a little bit of coolant on the edge of the lip where the O-ring's gonna seal on there. It doesn't hurt to just lubricate it and make everything go on easier, especially with new parts. You wanna make sure your hose is situated all the way down. Lock it in, baby. I'm gonna take my last hose that I tucked over to the side there it is. There was that satisfying click we were looking to hear. With that in, all we have to do is get our clip back on to lock this hose in. Oh yeah, baby. Gotta love it. We're going to do two things real quick before we head up top again. We're going to put our skid plate back in. Again, that was four 16 millimeter bolts. And one rule of thumb with these, if I didn't mention it at the beginning, is you never want to drive the vehicle without this because then everything's gonna kinda, well one, it's a structural piece, but two, everything might shift on you and you'll never be able to get it back on. So now we're gonna slap our shield back on. We have our 11 eight millimeter bolts. my good people. We're at the point where we're going to go ahead and check for leaks and also fill the cooling system before we put our fan shroud back on and the intake ducting. Like we mentioned at the beginning, we're using our vacuum filler. So we're going to go ahead and pull some vacuum on it. Try to get it to about uh, 20, 25 in between there. 
and let it sit for a minute or two, five minutes if we need to, just to make sure we don't have any leaks in the system. Once that is good, we'll go ahead and take, I have two gallons of BMW coolant here mixed with two gallons of distilled water. We'll get that going and uh, we'll fill up the system. If you don't have a vacuum bleeder at home, you can just do it the old school way by filling the expansion tank and circulating the electronic pump to bleed the system out. If you wanna see how that's done, be sure to click in the link in the description below. We have Gareth showing you how it's done in his X5. The procedure is the same for all the BMWs with electronic water pumps. Let's get to it. At this point, our system is holding. It has not dropped below the 25. I've got it to like 26. Our hoses are collapsed. I primed the line at the beginning of the startup. By doing that, all I did was keep the valve open and pull a little bit of vacuum and then close it as soon as it removed all the air from the line. So now we can go ahead and fill the system without any air bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this valve, let that do its thing. And on the other side of things, I'm gonna keep the end of our hose at the bottom of the bucket, just so I don't suck up any air bubbles by accident. Otherwise we'll defeat the whole purpose of this job. So. Let's get to it. At this point, the vacuum filler is done doing its thing. We're gonna reinstall our ducting and we're still gonna run the electronic procedure with the pump just as insurance. It's not gonna need it with this filler, but it never hurts to double check. Now we can go ahead and feed our fan shroud back in. Again, that's uh, held in by a T25 and your plastic rivet. I already have both of those set to the side. Once the fan shroud's in place, you can always kind of try to pull it away from the radiator. If you have it clipped in properly, it's not gonna go anywhere, even without the hardware. With that on, now we can reinstall our inner ducting piece. Get these all situated by hand first. And then I'll grab my T30 that I have set up on my small impact, and we'll zap these in. And we have our front piece. Again, this one's held on by four T30s. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. A tight one, to say the least, but definitely a doable one with a little bit of patience and a little bit of shop towels. A lot of shop towels. You can do this at home, no problem. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.